This is off planet radio. Radio Off Planet TV. I am Emily Moyer, and I have a regular guest with us here today. I have him back over and over and over again because I like the fact that he knows a lot but also does a lot and considers everything he knows and the things he does and vice versa. And so, welcome back to the program, Asaki Miyagawa. What's going on? Hey, Emily, I'm good. I've got my Trader Joe's coffee. I'm ready to rock. <laughs> <laughs> You like that? Cold, I like cold. I like cold brew coffee too. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's some really good ones. I don't know if you've investigated uh, the entire world of cold brew coffees, but um, there's some really cool ones out there. I think I have had the Trader Joe's one, but I like variety. I try new ones all the time. I'm I'm known to smuggle uh, Brazilian coffee back, so oh. by the by the kilo. So. <laughs> right on. All right. So. Um, we are going to, uh, in the first hour here, chat a little bit about kind of like the current political machinations and some mm -hmm. of the social contagion. We're going to kind of talk a little bit about some of the, the power pyramid tools and stuff as well. And then I hope you guys will stick with us into the second hour because Masaki has done some really cool work on uh, esoteric symbolism in Japan, and he's written some articles about it on his Patreon page, and we're going to get into that and some other weird things of the world in the second hour. So... Um, but we just kind of want to, there's been a lot of interesting, there's so much political and social noise right now. And we just wanted to, you know, we were, I saw Masaki this Sunday, which is the day that this whole Kobe Bryant sort of thing mm -hmm. went down. And before we got on the air here, we were chatting a little bit about it. Um, it, it's, I mean, it came at a really interesting time. It really has like every channel, like even when you go on like the, you know when you turn on cable TV, there's the channel that's just like the Spectrum channel? It's not yeah, actually yeah. a real channel. It's just the Spectrums thing. Like, that's mm -hmm. all they're talking about. Like, they've moved other programs. Like, you know, like, it's all that's being talked about on every sports channel, not just ESPN. It's on everything. And it really, like, quieted attention. You know, it, it took attention off of impeachment. It kind of took... Oh, the trade deal? <laughs> yeah, right? It t yeah, it yeah. took attention off of impeachment. It took attention off of... Um, even coronavirus for a little bit. And there's all sorts of other things. Certainly took a, uh, attention off of the Middle East, what was going on in the Middle East and whatnot. Um, and we know, and also it happened as, you know, Sonia was over here visiting yesterday and she pointed out something that I hadn't really aligned it with is that uh -huh. we have this um, constant rep repetition of a famous black celebrity being sacrificed on the same day as the Grammys, right? Whitney Houston uh -huh. one year was laying dead in her bathtub while the Grammy party was going on up above. The following year, her daughter was in the same position. Now we have Kobe Bryant having passed away, and large parts of the Grammys, which are music, not an athletic thing, were spent, um, you know, recounting stories of Kobe and saying things about him and this, that, and the other thing, drawing just a ton of um, social and cultural uh, energy to, to, to this. And I know you're super duper observant and always have your own kind of perspective on this. So what do you see going on here? Well, you know, a lot of people have been talking about it, uh, but obviously it's a little odd. <laughs> More than a few red flags, predictive programming and so forth. But I, I think that um, when you are in a certain level of influence and power, no matter if it's uh, political, economic, entertainment, sports, all roads lead to the top of the pyramid. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, I mean, Kobe Bryant obviously had some interest in the occult. Mm -hmm. Look at his uh, Mamba Academy. It's the Ouroboros. It's a stylized snake eating. Oh, it, the Mamba Academy is his? He owns that? Well, he was, his, he's Black Mamba. So, okay, I didn't realize. Yeah. So the Mamba, that Mamba Academy is out close by the restaurant that I used to work at, and uh -huh. people used to come in from there and and whatnot. Yeah. I didn't realize that he was an owner of that. 
Okay. I knew well, that he was in He's a, a big part of it. He's okay. In the Academy. Gotcha. And, and then his he had several logos, but the last one was a stylized eight, but it's an hourglass. It's like uh-huh. an eight, but then it was an hourglass like this. Um, all right. I'm going to see and, if I can find it. And, you know, hourglass, like your time's running out, right? And then eight is Saturn, which is Satan. <laughs> it's the timekeeper, right? Mm-hmm. Kron- Kronos. It's connected to the cannibalism. Ah! Uh, and then... Cannibal. And then also, I, I posted this on Robert Phoenix's uh, forum because a lot uh-huh. of people were talking about it. Yeah. Of, you know, switched on people there. So we were just going back and forth. Other peop- I was posting some things. Other people were posting. There it is, the Bamba, right? You see yeah. that? Yeah. I'm looking for the hourglass. I see the snake thing. Uh, I mean, just go look up maybe a Kobe logo hourglass. Kobe hourglass logo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but let's say for like the Black Mamba or the Mamba Academy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the M could be two V's upside down, which is Vav. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. look at that. That's what we saw. So, yeah. so the Mamba Academy M could be two V's upside down, which is Vav Vav, which is 66, mm-hmm. the number of the fallen angels, right? The Nephilim. Yeah. And then the Hourglass logo, that could be one six upside down and one six upright, making the eight, right? So mm-hmm. that's 66 again, which is Fallen Angels, Nephilim. It's the bloodlines, right? Yeah. Uh, and, okay, I'm not saying I have the answer to anything. This is just my own observation. And a lot of times, you know, if you're doing psychic viewing, you may not even know what to do with the information because it's mm-hmm. so odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I totally know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll just tell you what I picked up. And I'll just put it out there. People can make of it what they will. But I got that uh, the, pl- the helicopter crash was not an accident, mm-hmm. but it was not necessarily by mechanical or by human hand. I was getting that it could have been an occult accident. Because, see, the day that that helicopter crashed, uh, like the LAPD and the NIS helicopters had mm-hmm. a ground or grounding order because it was too foggy. Yeah. So that's an easy out because well they shouldn't have been flying anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So they they it's no wonder they crashed because they they flew when you know it was obvious to any experienced pilot you shouldn't be flying that day, right? Yeah. But I have a feeling that maybe there was some occult influence. Yeah, because you know, one of the famous stories in Japanese history is uh, the kamikaze, the divine wind, mm-hmm. right? So there was a Mongol invasion in like 1200 something. Uh, thousands of ships were going to Japan to invade Japan. And uh, it was Nichiren, who was one of the famous uh, priests who has his own school, the Lotus Sutra, you know, you mm-hmm. probably know about it. Yeah. And uh, it was basically spiritual magical warfare that they were doing these, these chants and incantations. And then a huge storm just wiped out the, you know, the entire Mongol fleet. And they just picked, picked off the remaining guys that climbed off of, onto shore in Japan. So what, was, so what was that? That's what I'm saying, that there can be supernatural elements to disasters. Uh- yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you uh, just back to this uh, hourglass thing here. I know. Can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's this logo, but then off to the side, I found this thing that is called the Complete Kobe System. Right. Oh, that, that that was from one of the uh, Nike ads, I think. Okay. So look at this, right? Like it's got it's the mm-hmm. you know same kind of pyramid. The, hour, the hourglass. The, the pyramid hourglass, which is also some, a kind of design that we've shown in when you're looking at maybe what the true shape shape of the earth is in terms of the toroid uh-huh. with the conical thing going kind of in and out at both ends. It looks sort of similar to yeah. that. But if you look at this here, number one is success, right? I don't uh-huh. know, right? Number two is adaptation. Three is perception. Four is explosion, domination, bestion, 
and the, success the, at success. This sounds the, like it's um, the what, system. this is the beast <laughs> system that's going on in this world that we're watching yeah. right now. Like right now we're, you know, between domination and beastion. <laughs> Maybe, or, you know, we're kind of uh, at the crossovers of explosion, domination, and bestion, right? Like, or, or, or something, I mean, you may have, you know, a different perception of that, but I think that's fascinating. I also see this Kobe's logo, this, well, that, look at that, right? It's a, but this purple one, too, there's this purple one here. Kind of odd, huh? Yeah, it's pretty odd. You know, I mean, there some of this is maybe it's a cyber Baphomet or something. <laughs> yeah, it does look like it does look like Baphomet or like you know, like the goat's head, right, right kind of thing. And also, this is his. They use this on his Nike apparel. Uh, it isn't that different in some ways to uh, Rafael it, Nadal's Nike logo. It, it kind of also gives me a little. This is a thing. I don't know. If this just pops up in my mind, but a lot of people talk Rafael about the Nadal this. logo. For a, lot of, a lot of people talk about the reptilians and so forth. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I have picked up quite a bit of insectoid uh, type, mantis type. Kobe for sure. Well, I mean, just in oh. general. Like, oh, okay. Viewings, yeah. Like viewings, mm -hmm. People have different spirit attachments. It's talked about, but not to the extent of the, the reptilians because of David, David Icke. That's such a big thing. Mm -hmm. But anybody, and I'm not saying that there are insectoid beings that are walking around but there's kind of energies mm -hmm. they might be entities you know this yep. is just what pops up it's not just me when people do like intuitive viewings it's a kind of an insectoid insectoid kind of uh i know what you, i know what you're talking uh -huh. about there's a lot of that i mean some you know whatever people might think of his work one way or the other and yet his own as a person steve richards does talk about some of this with like the sort uh -huh. of spider thing but also if you remember back when um crow set 777 first broke on big and he was talking about the hattie bob material with the spider race of beings that are managing humanity mm -hmm. you remember that do you remember that I didn't hear that story, but you know. If you look up Hattie Bob, you know, it's the H A T I B O V, the Hattie Bob material. Like, that, it's kind of interesting in terms of the spiders association, the, like the insectoid or the spider race of beings. You know what? In the world of creation, there's some weird stuff, Emily. <laughs> so. <laughs> But haven't you also noticed, and this is part of why I like talking to you, is we can cross over into many areas that we have in common. Um, sometimes, like, when you're at a party, right, you can see people's energy bodies, and you'll see people that have some of that sort of insectoid or mantis oh, kind yeah. of energy, the way that they move. You'll also see people who have some, you know, more um, reptilian kind of energy, gray alien kind of energy, or... Um, uh, primate kind of energy like other than human you know what i mean like i see different all kinds of different stuff have you seen this uh, like when you're at parties and people kind of like it's sort of like their beast comes out not so much at parties maybe just because i'm not looking but uh in our field yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's you kind know, of it's a similar the, yeah pe people that have uh, said they talk to god and you know they have messages they're channeling go look at their energy you know? yeah yeah <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, okay. So the Kobe thing, um, I agree with you. There's definitely something, I mean, even somebody who I, you know, talk to quite a bit who knows all of this information, but doesn't choose to talk about it so much anymore was even saying that like, oh, there's something weird with this one. You know what I mean? Like there is something undeniable that is not quite as outright as some of these other Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, things that uh, involving celebrities have been, but it has its, uh, a certain kind of ew creep factor to it that, you know. Well, well, you know, both of you and I live in L.A., which mm -hmm. is a place of high strange. Uh, mm -hmm. The strangest. And <laughs> the thing is, is when you get into these high circles, mm -hmm. you're in the club till you're not. Yeah, pretty much. And, and <laughs> you know, it's all cool till the debt comes due. Because yeah. once, you, you know, it's like one of the first things that any of these groups do is you take an oath that you come of your own free will and volition mm -hmm. and uh, you give up your sovereign right. You're, yeah. you, you don't have say. Once you cross that border, they, you're basically owned. You're yeah. going to get a lot of trink. You know, it's a funny thing, but a lot of the things that the Christians uh, in the biblical thinking, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, 
for the devil, it's pretty cheap to get a, a eternal soul because you just got to throw a little trinkets at them, some mm -hmm. Federal Reserve notes, and then you get the ultimate gold, right? Um, I have a story about, yeah. uh, you know, we know that it was Kobe and Shaq and the Lakers that time, I guess like 2000s, right? Well, this is over 10 years ago, and I heard it maybe first or second degree separation. So this is basically confirmed, okay? Uh, there was a woman that does an anchor or a popular personality on a TV network, okay? Urban, urban TV network. Okay. She, you know, hot chick. Shaq gave her a call and said, we, we, we like what you're doing. We've been watching. And we're just letting you know we'd like to work with you. And uh, she never followed up. And she, I guess she, she wasn't that interested. I don't know if she said that, but by her actions, she didn't follow up on it. Guess what happened? She was fired. Mm -hmm. she was fired and she you know she's she's back on air in her market where she is mm -hmm. but it, it took her she had to go basically work her way back up you know yeah. so that that's an and i'm not saying Shaq is a master mason i think the guy's probably a dumb dumb that likes the flashes masonic you know he's he's literally flashes like ring he's like yeah. I'm, a, I'm a freemason you get but that's what i'm saying well, you get the benefits until mm -hmm. you find out that it ain't all fun and games. And I think a lot of these celebrities, especially you reach a certain level, you're going to get tapped in, you know? So, well, both of these, these are interesting because in some uh -huh. ways they're very different in terms of their public persona. <clears throat> Shaq and Kobe have both been um, humiliated, debased, as well as blown up and lionized in terms of this, like, you know, mm -hmm. cultural icon kind of status right and one of the things i was thinking it's gonna uh was part of my thread with chris and steve when we were talking more about the tennis but this goes for uh music stars as well right and obviously basketball stars but mm -hmm. both of these guys have had so let's talk about kobe for a second right he was the talented young guy right like mm -hmm. everyone like this was un the talent we hadn't seen before and whatever and mm -hmm. then he comes and, you know, he turned into a monster because he, you know, raped a girl in the butt, supposedly, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. and then he, you know, had to sort of work his way back up in the public graces. And then he went out on top, a very loved figure who was sort of transformed from, you know, in, into this person who his teammates really admired because he was a good team player and this and that. And then there's almost well, now. He was a good athlete, but he didn't pass the ball a lot. <laughs> right. But, but, but I mean, but you know, the way that the media presented right, it was that, right? right? Like, yeah. they, I remember when it changed, right? And so it was kind of like he was almost that whole thing that happened with the girl in the hotel room was mm -hmm. part of the debasement ritual that they put everybody through in order to, for, you know, for them to prove their loyalty. Well, right? I, think, I think that was organic, but he probably, if he wasn't tapped in at that point. Yeah, that's what. He was, he was tapped in after because uh, – they probably said, okay, well, we can help you out with this, but, you know, you got to sign on. Yeah. But so I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying they made him do it, but they take these opportunities just like the blackmailing of politicians who they have video of them doing sure. stuff like that, right? But it's so fascinating to me that in this era of Me Too, right, mm -hmm. like people seem to have forgotten about <laughs> his bad behavior, and now oh. it's just like, oh, my oh, God, Kobe's a god. Did you see Ari Shafir? He's no. catching a lot of, like, S-H-I-T for what he posted. What did he you say? You know, Ari Shafir, he's in I know he is, yeah. Joe Rogan circles, but he's yeah. basically uh, very iconoclastic. Like, he's, he does that kind of grading humor or mm -hmm. to go against the grain just to, like, push people out of their comfort zone. He does crazy shit, too. He, he, he doses people without telling them when they're in mid-podcast mid or mid-performance. Oh, yeah. He, he, he does all sorts of shit, yeah. He does crazy. Kind of Bert Kreischer recently, but... Uh, he posted, you know, which is true. It's just like, kind of like, um, if you're going to post this, maybe like a few days after or whatever, but he basically posted this right when the Kobe thing was happening. It's like, well, you know, this rapist, whatever. Uh, but just like you're saying, well, he's catching a lot of stuff because obviously Kobe's very beloved. What he said was, it wasn't untrue. It was true, right? Mm -hmm. The guy was, went through that trial and everything. But, uh, you know, it, it's 
that goes to show you what a icon Kobe was because people are will people are willing, yeah you know people don't people at this point he raped a chick but you know right people really don't care and this is yeah. kind of like the, part of the reason that they uh -huh. are putting all of this attention on him and lionizing him is to reinforce that idea that and eh, people can do something like that but it's just a small mistake in in a long line of wonderful things they've done and the, the politicians like this perspective as well right because we're at a time where we're sitting on this edge of we, all of us who do any kind of alternative research know the truth about all the sexual depravity and the pedophilia mm -hmm. that goes behind that. But if we can keep presenting as the biggest, most loved stars and having these sort of remembrances of someone who, oh yeah, they made that small, small miscalculation of raping somebody, but it's really, you know, but they spent a lot of time slam dunking the basketball and this and that, and that's really more important. Well, you know, uh, the whole Me Too thing. Mm hmm it it got so big i mean number one i think it was promoted by the powers that be because totally because i think uh it was coming out of caa which was mm -hmm. one of the the Creative big artists uh, in, yeah, yeah it, it's agency. one of the big uh town agencies in mm -hmm. town which happens to, i think they're in century city and their building actually has them like a illuminati pyramid totally <laughs> well that whole century the the Pretty much the entirety of Century, Century City feels like a monument to that kind of stuff. Like in a similar way that like the, like, mm, like that area in Las Vegas where the Luxor is looks like a monument right. to that, right? Century City is not a unlike that. A lot of, uh, if you go on Google Maps, you'll see a lot of owls and pyramids and things. But yep. um, And shiny, shiny black reflective material and things like, you know, yeah. But, you know, the re in anything, they can't push something that's, totally fake so of course hollywood's hollywood you know charlie chaplin was charlie chaplin was famous as a molester and rapist right yeah uh but so roman that's polanski is like the mo one of the most beloved filmmakers he's you know openly a pedophile <laughs> okay so obviously there's been you know hundreds thousands of women that have been molested and abused in entertainment over the last century here in hollywood right mm -hmm. But Me Too totally avoided the ramp, like you just said, the rampant problem mm -hmm. with the abuse of children. Mm -hmm. So they were like very selective in what they were. They, 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 they took the, the focus off of helpless children and put them on celebrities who willingly slept their way to the top and then don't like it later. And, and you know, <laughs> uh, I don't think, I, I don't think it's a secret that of course, the women are going to get abused, but uh, Hollywood likes little boys and men. Mm -hmm. And I think for America, that's probably as or more disturbing that mm -hmm. a lot of their favorite male figures who are like, you know, tr the traditional heroes mm -hmm. had to bend over backwards or on the, were on the casting couch, too. Yeah. So, it, I mean, you know, this is all coming out, but then... Uh, it just seems like there's such a polarization and a splitting of society now. Mm -hmm. You could put the same facts in front of people and they're going to see two totally different things, you know? Yeah. So, oh, but I'll say, I'll say this too, because it does relate back to Kobe because he has a lot of Saturn alien energy. I mean, mm -hmm. his, his first logo, the Lake or his first uh, Jersey was eight mm -hmm. and eight is the number of Saturn, right? Saturn uh, demands sacrifice. Yep. So on the far end, it could be literal cannibalism, eating people, and incest and pedophilia is a kind of cannibalism because you're eating the next generation. You're eating the youth. But on the, uh, on the more positive end, Saturn could demand sacrifice, and you just sacrifice your time and energy to achieve a goal, like in business. You know, every archetype... Even Saturn, which is like the Dark Lord, mm -hmm. it has a higher and lower aspect. But if you look at Kobe, uh, well, there's an eight there too. Y you know, if you look On the at inside, yeah, look at the logo. yeah. Well, that 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 was a that this what we're looking at is it's an hourglass eight logo. It was mm -hmm. uh, Kobe Bryant's logos. Um, we were saying before we started. His first jersey number was uh, eight. Eight. And so this particular eight, uh, if you go back up, this eight hourglass logo, 
it could be a number six upside down with another six on the bottom. Yeah, the I see it. Yep. So 66, of course, is Vav Vav mm -hmm. in the Hebrew letters, which is the number of the Nephilim or the fallen angels. Yeah. And then he also had the uh, Mamba Academy. Mm -hmm. And the M of the Mamba is a stylized Ouroboros or the snake yeah. eating its tail. And M could be VV or Vav Vav upside down, which is a 66 again. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about Genesis 6. We're talking about the bloodlines, you know. Yeah. It all goes back to the same thing. Um, I just think that um, I think people have had enough time. At least people that you know, this is off planet radio. So if you're if you're watching this, shouldn't be. You probably heard this before, but basically, most people until recently have not really had a f an idea of what's on the playing board. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing. You know, I think most off-planet radio listeners, it shouldn't be a surprise to you, or you probably have an idea that there was something weird with this Kobe Bryant thing, and this is just one particular event, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's time, just like we're doing the power up, right? Yeah. In a power up event. It's, it's time to be aware of these things, mm -hmm. but now start focusing, okay, now what can we do with our hands uh, what do we want to do in 2020 instead of totally just getting sucked into these high emotional events? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it's important to know. It's important to kind of like just be kind of aware of the news items. Mm -hmm. But for 99% of the public, it stops there. Yeah. And they're, they're like feeling up and they're feeling down and they're yeah. up and down. And yeah. they're like, they're like har loose harvesting the totally. energy of the public. Uh, whereas for me, you know, I, I have a little bit of, uh, you know, let's just take a step back and we can observe and kind of talk about these news items. Yep. But, you know, we talk back and forth. Okay. When are we going to do the show and this? And I'm like working on these 24 seven, you know, so I'm kind of like putting things in motion or I've been working with, you know, the energy pyramids, orgone pyramids energy tools and so when you create movement in your own life but you also have a high energy it's you become more sovereign you're putting in the power in yourself whereas you know a lot of people they're going along to get along totally and they're just getting pushed around uh by society by these you know social movements and so forth yeah, I want to move into what you're talking about here real quickly, just before we leave this. There's a particular, so one other fact about this is this occurred in the same area of Calabasas where there were fires just over a year ago. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that's kind of, it's interesting that they're choosing this area to sort of focus, like there's, you know, that's a funny area, that path between Calabasas and Malibu, where a lot well, of this kind of stuff goes on. Well, I mentioned to you, because you're more familiar because you're from the Valley. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more from like um more like central la or yeah. like near downtown but uh i don't go out to the far valley that often so i was passing through simi valley which is kind of across if you could see simi valley from calabasas because it's sort of like the mountain range across, simi, right? simi valley so there, you have calabasas and malibu yeah. and if you follow a straight line yeah. then what you get is you get the santa Susana pass which has chatsworth on one yeah. side which is where i grew up and simi valley on the other side it's just a different side yeah. of the same basic hill and in between there is where you have rockadine boeing all that kind of stuff and a lot of weird energy related to Manson Tunnel, Indian Indian burial grounds, so, harvesting of children and going on there, all sorts of stuff. So, you know, I worked in Calabasas and I visited a friend in Simi Valley not too long ago. So uh, I was asking you and you were saying, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's an energy there. I, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not totally numb. Like I do sense things, but I'm not one to always be driving. Like, Oh, I feel this. I feel this. But let me tell you, Emily, just like, you know, I had told you at the time when I was driving, I think it's the 118 mm -hmm. at Rocky point at Rocky peak. That's where you're talking there's about. There's a certain point where the freeway goes like this. Rocky peak. It, it peaks. And when you start going down towards Simi Valley, right around there, 
to me, it's not subtle. There is a definite energy. So this area, people, is uh, Santa Susana, which mm -hmm. is, it's basically where the Manson family was hanging out. They filmed a lot of, like, uh, cowboy westerns out there, mm -hmm. like the Spawn Ranch, right? But it's also uh, Chumash Indian Burial Ground. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, like, rock, rock structures there so there's probably maybe some minerals some kind of energy there and it's also the site of the first official nuclear meltdown which is the rocket dimes facility mm -hmm. so there's a lot going on there mm -hmm. uh but i think in general there's that area and then if you go towards the beach then mm -hmm. you'll start going through calabasas and then to malibu right yeah those santa monica mountains same thing there's a point where you're going over peaking to the top of the mountain range and then start going down towards the beach towards Malibu there is a very discernible <laughs> energy so there's something something you know well if you know going back to like the native Indians the Native mm -hmm. Americans it's no wonder they have their sacred spots there because you could feel the energy there yeah there, it's it's very a portal pass through kind of energy there mm -hmm. um it's very you know so there's a base in malibu there's a base under chats where they're connected through some sort of um, you know high speed or uh, pod like uh, con, you know train connection system um and you can't actually at least the general public cannot pass directly from Chatsworth or Simi Valley over to Mount Calabasas and Malibu. You actually kind of have to go around because the roads are blocked where Rockadine and Boeing are. You can't, just the general person cannot pass through there in their car. So you either have to go around um, by going, you know, uh, Valley Circle to the 101, or you have to go around the back 118 to the 23 to the 101 to, to sort of get from one, one place to the other. But it is in really, in some ways, the weirdest spot of Los Angeles. There's a lot of energy focused and uh, focused on, you know, Hollywood and and you know uh, uh, Getty, downtown Getty, and Getty, Getty area. <laughs> but this is a far. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. this is far weirder and more ancient. You know what I mean? The, the, what kind of in some weird way? Um, what I was saying about the Calabasas, so I just thought it was interesting that, it, again, we're focused on something in that same line, that same past. There is something very unusual about the energy there. But this kind of event, whether it was created or just focused on, elicits this energy that you're talking about that is one of sadness or shock. It's a certain kind of energy to harvest. The other story sure. that's been, been going on, do you want to say something or should I go on? Oh, yeah. Well, exactly. Um it's a harvesting ritual, but it's not, you know, they could just be harvesting it to quote unquote feed on, but yeah. Uh, same thing with burning man. When you have people's energy cracked open, the sex mm -hmm. trucks and rock and roll with like 50,000 people mm -hmm. in one spot on, on a magical, you know, symbol line, yeah. stylized pentagram. You can use that kind of energy. I mean, you got to imagine Kobe Bryant, you know, beloved by hundreds of millions of people right mm -hmm. they can use this energy and then flip it and then use it to power something else absolutely you can, you can use that to basically power a whole other universe or a whole other galaxy or or any 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 action that you want to take right so yeah yeah so i mean um this happens every year at like Super Bowl or any of these things. Yep. And, Which is but, coming up as well. Yeah. It's, so, it, it, it's yeah. a magical ritual time. So there's, there's often one of these events on Grammy Sunday. And then the following Sunday is mm -hmm. Superb Owl Sunday. Right. And so that week in between is it, like, you know, there's a connection between those two things. And it's almost like you have, you know, you start the energy rolling there with a certain kind mm -hmm. of sadness, shock, awe you know worshiping of a fallen hero and then you have this week to sort of that energy sort of gestates into this thing where the following sunday there's this celebration of some bread and circus which is actually something that doesn't really matter but you have that and then all the symbolism that goes into the halftime show and all of that kind of stuff it, it the, the, like it's two ends like you're creating a certain kind of energy funneling in a certain direction and then transmuting it into something else and send you know what i mean it's kind of an interesting well system well, you know, I was driving around, uh, it was either yesterday or the day before, and I was behind some of the LA city buses, mm -hmm. and it said R.I.P. Kobe on the back. Nice. It was, it was cy cycling like R.I.P. Kobe. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to think, of course, 
hey, Kobe Bryant, star player, you know, classic athlete. But if a president died, I don't think they would put, you know, R.I.P. Trump or R.I.P. Obama. <laughs> On the back they of the certainly bus. wouldn't put R.I.P. Trump on the back of the bus. Well, yeah. yeah, but you know what I'm saying, Obama or whatever, right? I mean, it is, you know, these uh, sports figures, they are like the new gods. You know? Well, some of these buses, I don't know why, but this is just coming to my mind. A lot of these public buses in Los Angeles are powered by hydrogen, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a certain kind of energy. I'm wondering if there's any correlation between that, right? This certain energy that's created by some of these sports stars. I had a converse, we got into a conversation behind the scenes at Robert's event about so, the uh, periodic tables and certain elements and things representing, like, the, they're actually like a representation of the gods, or the gods are a representation of those elements or energies. And oh, I'm well, curious yeah, about I, hydrogen I, 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 power. I, I, well, you know, I don't know about hydrogen, but uh, elements it's similar to like chakra colors because yeah because the color is a light frequency which has a specific number and i i relate this to uh physical materials because uh when i've done some custom well pyramid orders Mm -hmm. uh i did one that you know it kind of looked satanic but it was because it was like black and red pyramid, mm-hmm. but it was because the person wanted Mars energy. Mm-hmm. The Mars is red. Yeah. And then, but then for, for the metal element, I usually use aluminum, mm-hmm. but he wanted specifically Mars energy. So I looked for steel and iron mm-hmm. because yeah. that's connected to Mars. Yeah. So materials definitely have, you know, is it a big difference? No. But if you want that flavor of that planet, yeah, I got very you. specific colors, there's very specific materials to use, and it just reinforces the archetype that you want to tap into. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> this event created this energy uh-huh. of sadness, shock, awe, all that kind of stuff. The other thing that's going on that sort of took a background for those days, for these period of time where we're focused on Kobe, but is nonetheless creating an energy all of its own, is this deal with the coronavirus. And that's going to move us into some of the things we want to talk about with frequencies and whatnot. (laughs) But the coronavirus creates a completely different kind of energy, right? Mm -hmm. It's fear, panic, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, all that. You know, are they trolling us, Emily? Yes. Or are we in a matrix (laughs) or what? Because you probably, people probably seen out there, coronavirus or corona, it can be, the words can be flipped around to raccoon. Because oh, raccoon, raccoon, raccoon City is the city where the C virus in Resident Evil, the uh-huh. zombie virus, took over. Ah, uh, And then so, so Corona, Raccoon City, the city in Resident Evil. And then I, I don't think it was the bio, bio weapons, but, you know, they say biological research facility. Uh, in China, they have one with the umbrella logo. Uh-huh. And the the evil corporation in resident evil is called the umbrella corp in its exact same mm-hmm. logo. I don't think, I don't think the photo that was taken was from Wuhan, but there is a bio facility in China with, mm-hmm. with the umbrella corp logo. So it's like, are they trolling us? Is this <laughs> like, how does this happen? Yeah. It, it, it's almost, it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a movie. No, it's, ev- we, it's evidence that we're living in a simulation. Because everything that we've, we're seeing in real time on the real news mm-hmm. is exactly what we've seen in a million movies when, the virus, shows, yeah. when the virus breaks out, you know? Now, we were watching uh, POI the other night. We've been watching uh-huh. POI. And in this fifth season, there's a gentleman who came on a plane, an Asian gentleman who came on a plane from Hong Kong and was his, uh, like, he was supposed to just have a layover to London, but he got ended up getting off the plane because he didn't feel well and going to a hospital in New York, and mm-hmm. he already had the bird flu, but then because of the nasty technological system that's running hospitals, somebody had sent something that was a live virus instead of a thing to help with the flu, and they gave uh-huh. him that, and it created a super bug, a virus, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is kind of like the way that it's all being presented and the things that were going on there were like, this was like, you know, proceed, you know, like a coronavirus thing, right? So... This is, um, 
You know, some, it's like a couple of years ago, we had Ebola, and before that, we had the bird flu, and before that, it was the swine flu, right? Every couple of years, like clockwork, it, one of these things comes out, and then there's always you know, the evidence linking Bill Gates to the creation of it. And then, of course, the, the creation of a vaccine for it. It's well, like Emily, are you anti-science? Because <laughs> now all your anti -vac kooky anti-vaxxers out the door. Because guess what? We have the corona vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> right? Corona yeah, is no longer a beer. It's now a yeah, vaccine. And, you know, yeah. there's, that, there's that herd immunity. So you better right. think it. You know? Well, speaking of her herds, this refers back to something I wanted to mention about uh -huh. the athletes, right? It, we were looking at their logos, right? The, and it, their logos are usually designed for them to go on their Nike clothing. This is their branding. Athletes and musicians that are signed to agencies, sponsors, or labels are slaves, and they are branded because they are cattle. And well, so this is part of this creation of the worship of the idea of herd immunity. Well, this is, uh, you know, this is like conspiracy 101, but mm -hmm. the Nike logo is the ring of Saturn. Saturn. I know, it's that, yeah. You, you remember Heaven's Gate, the, the cult, yeah. they killed themselves when, mm -hmm. uh, was it the uh, Hale Bop or one of those comics yeah. came, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they all wore, you know, Star Trek jumpsuits, but on their feet, they had Nike. Nike shoes. tennis shoes. It was sponsored by Nike. And, you know, that, that swoosh, you can also read as like the the scythe of saturn because mm -hmm. you know it comes to take the souls you know mm -hmm. so you know is it gonna kill you if you wear a nike sneakers no but the fact that the dark lord planet is on the feet of hundreds of millions of people i think that mm -hmm. has some significance well, it's, it's like it's like see the the thing is the these uh you could say across the board, but I'll just give an example. The SJWs, because we are in LA, the, the mm -hmm. so-called, you know, the P hat, the PSSY hat, that, yeah. that, that started in Atwater Village just yeah. five just minutes. Just around the corner from you, yeah. yeah. You know, so th this is the kind of environment that we live in, mm -hmm. but I don't think because most people, and the SJ SJWs included, they don't have a good symbolic uh, understanding of language or the no. symbol, the, the, the cults etymology of language. So or anything it's like, like okay, you're, you're so concerned with diversity. You're so concerned with, you know, social justice. What, what do you think about the fact that hundreds of millions of people across the world have the God of cannibalism, blood sacrifice on their feet, but yeah. that, that doesn't disturb you. You're worried about if you said Jem or whatever. Yeah. But but we have a death cult displayed out in the open in, in our society. Yeah. I watched an interesting documentary about earth grounding or earthing. Uh -huh. It's a short documentary. It's actually quite good. Maybe I'll link it here. Um, but you know, part of what's create this guy was talking about how most of the health issues, but also just this detached feeling thing that humanity had this detached feeling or this this detachment mm -hmm. humans have from their origins and what's really right and what's important and stuff seems to have come along with the creation of rubber soled shoes. That's the thing that has untethered us from our earth. Mm -hmm. Right? Ungrounded. And ungrounded us. And there's no bigger purveyor of the ungrounding tools than Nike. And so, you know, you're literally out of touch with, you know, the thing that you should be in symbiosis with, and they're the, the profiteers, and the progenitors and profiteers of that. And guess what? It's not even that great of a shoe, because <laughs> right. if you want to sponsor me New Balance, you can, but I wear New Balance because they're much better support for your feet. me too i wear I, I wear new balance as well you know but like this is how crazy this stuff is and you know like someone who i love very much mm -hmm. but who i am at odds with about almost everything other than you know the, mm -hmm. the, that our relationship to each other um is very uh i guess she's what you would call an educated sjw right um but you know is okay with Nike, right? Likes all these athletes, you know, that that are represented by Nike and that Nike pushes, but you know, will not buy New Balance anymore because even though those were her used to be her favorite no. shoes, because um, that New Balance donated to the Trump campaign, mm -hmm. 
right? <laughs> so, I mean, like literally this is the reasoning that supposedly educated people they're, are using. They're bad, they're bad hombres, Emily. They donated to Trump, they're bad hombres. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, you know, uh, see, the thing is, is that if you don't have, um, you know, I'll, I'll say this, you could start from any subject, any point, and if you study it 100%, it's all going to connect back to the same overall yep. structure because mm -hmm. if it's true and there is a, a way the world works, mm -hmm. you can come from the medical, you could come from, you know, military industrial complex, you could come from a cult, but they all converge. Mm -hmm. And so this is what people have to understand that, um, of course, off planet radio listeners have been looking at this for years, but if you don't understand that, the archetype of Saturn has such a the archetype of Saturn has such an influence on our society. This is uh, Mer that's Merkaba. his his latest toy he made yesterday. <laughs> I love I love what I love is whenever I text or talk or whatever with Misaki Huey, he's have some new thing he's working on that he sh can show me. So well, this I is your latest creation. You know, sometimes you get bored after you make like a thousand pyramids. So mm -hmm. this is of course the Saturn hypercube, also known as the Merkaba. It does have an energy to it. This is actually the same like or going to organite material, right? Uh, but, you know, the color of Saturn is black, so I just happen to choose black. But, you know, the Saturn archetype has such a large uh, influence on our society. And I've been shocked how many people, or let's say our kind of people, like the off-planet people and alternative research, it's massively bigger than it was like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's still <laughs> relatively small percentage of the population yeah and I, I was talking to a, a, like a hard you know i guess you could call them a hardcore communist like a real communist mm -hmm. not these not the, the fake shit we have not, yeah. not these bernie sanders communists but a hardcore committed communist yeah you could call him a paleo commie right mm -hmm. he, he did not know about anything about saturn mm -hmm. and and so why would it, why should a communist know about saturn look at the communist logo the hammer and the sickle Mm -hmm. it's that, like the that, scythe yeah, the, yeah yeah the sickle is a saturn it's a saturn cult yeah you know and um in china the cultural revolution you know they did eat people mm -hmm. because the 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 famine it was a man-made famine got so bad that they started to eat people mm -hmm. kind of like the one that they're creating here the man-made famine droughts the man-made famines uh you know yeah, yeah. To say, yeah, they, history they call, repeats itself, yeah. They call long, Emily, they call long pig. Long pig is human. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, you know, and then, and then uh, some of this is like from written accounts and things. So I don't know how true it is, but I have heard that it was um, even to the point, I think it was in Guangxi province, which I think is in the south of China. But uh, they had like, you know, the red guards and, you know, political officials taking people that were, I guess, I don't know what they call them, capitalist rotors or like counter counter revolutionaries. Yeah. And they would rip them apart and eat them. So, well, it's kind of, it's kind of like it's similar now with the whole thing with the uh, Falun Gong, right? Like they, oh, yeah, they these the people who thing. these yeah. people who have a spiritual practice that places someone other than the government as as superior, right? And so they persecute these people because they have a quote unquote spiritual religious belief that is not permitted, mm -hmm. but at the same time they are takes harvesting their organs and using them for life extension because they know that the practice these people have also make them the help the help the most healthy and most sort of fit to survive so like it, it, it's gross on both ends right they're persecuting them and then they're stealing their body but i just bring that up because uh you know that happened because it was a man-made famine and so mm -hmm. forth but i think there is a connection between when the low like the flag your country or like the logo of the the hammer and sickle Mm -hmm. which is the Saturn cult mm -hmm. and then massive cannibalism <laughs> pops up you totally. know and then so same I, I, and then connecting back hundreds of millions of people wearing the the ring of Saturn on their feet mm -hmm. 
you know. And most of the Nike stuff is manufactured in China for sure. So yeah, and yeah. you know the thing is, is it's not to be afraid of these symbols or like you go say Satanist, Saturnist, or something. But it's just understand what it is because Hilarious. when you when you understand it, it takes the pow some of the power out of it and it puts the power back in your hands. Yeah, you know, because it, it's it's like it's like you know we both grew up in LA, so if you think or if you're walking around you don't think that that the tags on the walls and people are wearing red and blue and they're throwing hand signs you think that don't mean nothing that th those those are like like warning signs right mm -hmm. so it has a significance you know not as much now but you know like growing up back in the day in the 80s and shit yeah when i grew up in silver lake it wasn't even like a heavy heavy area but we did have gangs around here mm -hmm. you wear certain colors this color color is a code, shape is a code, symbols mm -hmm. are a code. So yeah. just under just understand the symbolic language, that's all. You know? Yeah. Because so, because the thing is is that these are very key archetypes that have influenced the development of human society, especially the Saturn. And you yeah. know, Kobe had a lot of uh, Capricorn Saturn energy. Uh -huh. You know, that's represented in that, that eight that he had. Well, also in that um, one, that, that, that one that sort of looked like the Moloch, it looked like it had sort of horns almost, right? Like a very Capricornian one kind of, of. One of his uh, Nike logos, it kind of looked like a Baphomet or something. Yeah. Okay, so these symbols, these signs, they hold energy, they hold a vibration, they hold frequency. We mm -hmm. talked about, you know, the coronavirus, and the energy. What are sort of some of the signs, symbols, and frequencies that you are recognizing as they promote this pandemic to create this level of fear in the society? What are the sort of frequencies that they're using? And how can one, uh, someone, you know, well, use, use tools, energies, or whatever to um, dissipate that or to push back at that or? Yeah, I mean, well, number one is just uh, kind of understand what's, what's happening i do think that because there's even people are like it's not real it's just totally fake i think it is real but i don't think it's i think it's highly contagious and you know a certain percentage of people they could die from it but i think it's more of a social engineering thing because mm -hmm. uh you know i just saw today that i think the u.s is closing flights from china coming here now Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's affecting business. This could start the global financial reset. Mm -hmm. uh, but also they have a great amount more power now with uh, vaccine legislation, right, for mm -hmm. public safety. And it, and it puts people in a fear-based mentality, mm -hmm. right? So practical solutions. Get out of the fear and know what you can do to – you know, stay healthy and maintain the energy in your space. So number one, may, this may not be the first thing that comes up in people's minds, but we've been talking about every time I've been on here, we somehow referenced energy tools, right? 5G was just turned on in Wuhan at the time the virus was breaking out. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't so, know that. So, you know, Already, we know the cell phone signals, the cell towers, the Wi-Fi, it's affecting people's health. Even if it's only the fact that you're not getting as much sleep. I think it's doing much more than that. But at minimum, because you tell me, Emily, you have a number of my tools. The first thing that happens if you have a legit, well-made energy tool, as simple as this orgone organite pyramid right mm -hmm. you put it on your bed stand next day if it if it's working next day you'll say i got better sleep yeah i would say that yeah. i would say that it i mean it improves the quality of my sleep it, for me the way i think it's uh -huh. improved the quality of my sleep is for a number of years i either wasn't dreaming or not remembering my dreams. And I will say that since I have your tools, I have crazy uh -huh. dreams every night, right? And so I think that like dreaming, REM sleep, all that stuff is an important part of, of like uh, resolving issues within the human psyche, right? As well, obviously rest is part of that, but also like, you know, some of that that goes on when you're dreaming and in REM sleep is part of, um, 
resolving some of the cognitive dissonance of our daytime consciousness with a more unified mind at night. So for me, it's more like I have these really crazy in-depth dreams and then I'm awake in the, in the morning and it's like, well, you're, wow, you're very I, You're very intuitive. So for the average person, they're just going to notice that they slept an hour quicker or they got the full sleep. They recharge uh, quicker because yeah. sleep is the time the body recharges and repairs the most. Yeah. And so if you, night after night, if you're not getting full sleep, that means that your health is steadily going down. But like you're saying, for people that are open channels or they're very intuitive, see, when you have an energy tool like a pyramid or the tensor rings, right? The ambient energy, the etheric energy in your space gets ramped up. So it's mm -hmm. like you're getting pushed into that etheric bandwidth of like mm -hmm. a dreamscape. So intuitive people, even if it's non-powered, because with my powered pyramid, you really go to the moon. But even if something is a non-powered pyramid, which is just like quartz, metal, and plastic resin, and I have some shungite in there, right? Just this, people get significant increase in those like vivid dreams, right? Yeah. But I would put it to you like this. If you go look at the Wi-Fi dropdown of your computer, mm -hmm. Average, you're going to see like 15, 20. Yeah. Plus let's, see what, let's see what I got right so now. I've those, got those are, about, tw I'd say 12, 12. Yeah. Okay. So those are all overlapping Wi-Fi signals that you, that we're getting hammered with in 2020 that didn't exist when we were coming up, you know, as teenagers, right? Yeah. I know, I know this may shock some of the younger people, but we didn't have smartphones when we were coming <laughs> up, right? Right. Well, we, we had something called dial up, you know? Yeah. But, but uh, so just basic energy tools to keep the Wi Fi off of you, to keep, uh, you know, like, you know, we have like pendants, there's pyramids, there's all kinds of tools out there. People know about the Shungite. So, because this is environmental stress. So, you know, every minute of the day, your immune system's trying to fight off the poisons in your food, the chemtrails in the air, the poisons in the water. Now you're getting hammered by the Wi-Fi. So it's just try to go down the list and mm -hmm. start, start neutralizing. Cause once you take that stress off of you, your health increases. Yeah. Um, so just the electromagnetic or the EMF issues that it may not seem related to the virus or outbreaks, but it's a major stress point mm -hmm. that we can easily take care of, you know? So I have a question for you because you mm -hmm. have some of these high powered pyramids that you connect up to frequency mm -hmm. generators and whatnot. Is there a particular frequency which is good for or neutralizing of um, virus or bacteria or things like that? Well, uh, this gets into another area. So uh, there's frequency therapy. Okay. Well, I think, now, now, I think, now, we're not giving any medical advice. I'm only talking about things that I've done for myself. So people out there, this is just shop talk. We're not giving any kind of medical advice, okay? Yeah. But uh, there is, um, I guess, a field or there are machines called Rife Machines. And it's from Royal Raymond Rife who was, uh, he came out of Southern California. I don't mm -hmm. know if he was originally from here, but he was based in San Diego. This is about like 100 years ago. And he came up with a method of killing pathogens, like mm -hmm. virus and bacteria, without pharmaceutical drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I have, I have a machine right here. This is a Spooky 2 Rife machine, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's basically a frequency generator. You could use this to power my pyramids too. Okay? Yeah. So Rife, he, he did several things. Number one, he, he was like a machinist also. Mm -hmm. So he developed a microscope where you could see live virus and bacteria live. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by going through a frequency range, right, he would hit a point where the frequency – see, everything has uh, – inherent frequency so that includes virus and bacteria so i think everybody's familiar with like the concert singer she goes ah and then when the pitch her 
of what she's singing resonates with like a wine glass. Yeah. Like, uh, and you keep hammering it eventually. Psh, yeah. The wine glass shatters, right? That Rife called the MOR, the mortal oscillation rate. So if you know the vac the vibration or the frequency of a virus or bacteria, there's no escape. Okay, and these things, they are intelligent. So they'll try to change the protein coat to make their frequency a little bit above or below where it was. Mm -hmm. so they'll try to duck where you're hammering them, right? But if you introduce a wobble and you go just above and below, you know, so ah. you can you can hit them as they're shifting. Okay. Interesting. But uh, you know, Rife, he he did the medical trials with Rife machines, and at the time they were using plasma. Mm -hmm. This is this is not an official plasma ball, okay. but I but this is a modified one. Okay. <laughs> this is like the the children's typical plasma. Yeah. Hit the streamers. Yeah. I have some ports here where you can actually connect it to a Rife machine because guess what? The real Rife plasma, it's a couple thousand. I have it actually, but since I try a lot of things, this was a modified children's uh, plasma ball. Mm hmm. Which is, of course, it's not as strong as a thousand, you know, a couple thousand dollar one. Yeah. But plasma is plasma. If you're right here, you have the right frequency. It's very similar. But basically, plasma creates radio waves, which will pass through the whole body. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, it's a very, it's the most intense form to get these frequencies. But Rife, uh, they did medical trials at USC. This is like in the 1930s. And they cured, you know... I'm just saying what Rife did, okay? Because yeah. because in America you can't say cure or whatever, but yeah. basically they had something like 14, 16 terminal cancer patients. They resolved the cancer, yeah. And it was a USC medical trial, okay? Yeah. So they they cleared something like 14 of them in like two or three months, and it took another month to clear the other two. Yeah. So they had a banquet. I think it was in 1934, 36, with you know the top physicians in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It was, they had a banquet for Rife in Pasadena. It was called the end of all disease. Wow. But of course, you know what happened after. Of course. The same thing that always happens because we live in there, an episode there are, there are, there are like, yes. They're like, uh, you know, like, because you have to think once you have a machine and an operator, there's no cost. You right. Know? You're not it, prescribing free pharmaceutical drugs. It's the same reason we can't have like free energy technologies like cold fusion or whatever, right? Because yeah. there's only the initial purchase of the device. There's not ongoing, you know, payments, incremental, incremental payments and, you know, no, no, no paying for your energy then. It puts a person sort of in charge of their own healing and all of that. A couple of years back, uh, Melissa and Aaron Dykes at Truth Stream Media did a really great, uh, a really great video about what we're talking about right now. Um, but it, this is another example. It's the same. We live in, I've mentioned this many times. I've heard Robert talk, Robert talk about it. We live in an episode of Scooby-Doo, right? Where there's all the, every time it seems like a new brouhaha about something. And then when you take the mask off, it's like the same, the same person up under the mask all the time, right? It's the same old story about who's preventing healing things, who's preventing free energy, who's this and that, and creating all these events and whatever. Everything is Scooby-Doo. So yes, it, it, it's exactly so the same with Rife and his machines. So there's a lot of talk, um, maybe the last five, ten years, about how there's these superbugs mm -hmm. and the antibiotics are not working anymore. What are we going to do? It's a crisis. Well, that's true if you're only looking at pharmaceutical drugs, mm -hmm. right? But we do have the Rife machine now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and ba basically, this is a regular frequency generator that's just modified to work with software. Yeah, to trigger this generator. Yeah. So even if they were to totally ban these things, yeah, uh, you'd have to ban like frequency generators, which is like they're all it, over the place. They wouldn't be able to do other things it, that they it's, do. It's, yeah. it's not going to be as convenient as if you have the software, but if you have the number, you could input, you can dial in the number on this. Yeah. Thing. So it's like the technology is out there now and it's coming yeah. from China. And once it's China's making it like you can't really stop can't it. Can't stop it. Yeah. But, but basically, so what's the answer to the super bugs? You know, we don't have any antibiotics anymore. Well, we're in, you know, we're moving into the Aquarian age and we talked about it before. What's the age of Aquarius. 
Aquarius is the air sign, right? Even the symbol of Aquarius, it looks like waves, like waves yeah. in the air. So uh, that means that we're moving into a time when if you want to benefit yourself, but achieve a level of mastery in this age, because every age kind of has a flavor to it, right? There's a theme. Aquarius, it rules uh, future science. Mm -hmm. It rules, you know, the air sign. So things will not be as obvious. Fre everything will be frequencies that you can't it's see. But it's the, it's yeah. but We're in the frequency era. Yeah. Basically, you have to have the sixth sight because the human being has a capability to pick up on the bandwidth that, that's beyond just the 3D, right? Yeah. Or like the mm -hmm. visual light spectrum. So, well, the answer are things like rifing. Yeah. Because uh, you can kill off basically anything just knowing the frequency. And there, you know, because I think this all started. Well, what can you do? Are there things out there? Uh, there are some presets now that have been released of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it is possible that you could use that with rifing, or at least you have like a range because the coronaviruses are at a certain frequency range. Yeah. So Maybe able to scan within that. Uh, there's also presets. This is also new. I don't know how effective exactly mm -hmm. these presets will be, but the general idea is you can kill any virus and bacteria with frequency. And uh, rifing is specifically killing things off, right? Mm -hmm. But using the same technology, and this, this, I think we talked about this, but this is maybe trippy to people. So there's different modes of transmission. We have the plasma, right? It, it flashes. Plasma has radio waves, which are invisible, but they'll pass through your body, hitting anything in here. And if it's like at the frequency of bac virus or bacteria, those are going to die off, okay? The other mode that's been available for years is the TENS pads. Mm -hmm. You know, if you remember Bruce Lee, he had the TENS pads. He was like flexing his muscles while he was typing. Yeah. And the ten pad, TENS pads are his electrical, it's a basic electricity. Current runs through your body, right? But in 2014, uh, this is a Spooky 2 Rife machine. Spook, spooky 2, it's like spooky and the number two. Okay. The reason why they call it Spooky 2, Emily, is because uh, Einstein, He's, he said that, you know, the quantum entanglement, like, God doesn't do that because that, that'd be like a ghost. It's like spooky action. A spooky okay. action at a distance, yeah. Yeah, but, but so sort of as a joke, I don't know if you could see, but there's a little, there's a little ghost on here. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> oh, you can see it here. There's a little ghost. It looks kind of, oh, that's cute. Yeah, a little, looks like a little so, Casper the Friendly Ghost or something. That's so funny. in 2014, Spooky 2, they came out with this quantum remote, okay? So all you do is you put a DNA sample in here, mm -hmm. which would typically be the fingernail clippings. Mm -hmm. And when the, this is, so this is a scalar antenna. When the signal from the generator comes here, it creates the scalar waves. It hits the, the nail sample. Mm -hmm. The DNA is the target. So anybody with that DNA is going to receive the signal and you don't have to be in front of the machine because it's quantum entanglement, right? It's like radionics, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're okay. dealing with uh, transmitting a signal through the scalar field. In the scalar field, it's like another bandwidth that's not recognized in the standard EMF. Yeah. But um, you could go, so it's very convenient for receiving these frequencies because you could put vitamins, you could put essential oils. Essential oil is a very high frequency. So you could you could put... You could use like actual physical like oil drops, right? Or a diffuser to put like a lavender is very good, very high. The, the essential oils is actually a frequency. Yeah. So this is another suggestion or things that, uh, you know, that I've tried out that I think is great. You know, thieves, thieves oil is also really good for bacteria, virus, pathogen, things like that. And then also you can even do like oregano oil under the tongue is also great for this kind of stuff. And, and again, this is something that may not immediately come to mind when you're talking about, you know, virus or coronavirus. But literally, if you keep the energy or the frequency in your space very high, it can't get you're in. much less likely to get sick. Because, yeah. I mean, we've probably all been to those houses or spaces that's like almost like a crack house. <laughs> and you're like, 
the people in here are like very low vibration, right? Yeah. Then you go to somebody that has a nice Palo Santo or a, a lavender oil. It literally is a frequency. Mm -hmm. But now with the, the power devices, you can use a Rife machine, right, to transmit that frequency. But if you have uh, one of my power pyramids, you can also, not only does the power pyramid itself. All right, let's see the big boy here. Yeah. <laughs> not, not only does the power pyramid uh, create a high energy. Regardless, guys, that, that is a quartz crystal and Rodan coils in there, yeah? Yeah, I'm probably yeah. going to, this is probably the pyramid I'm going to bring to the power up session. But uh, you can, you could broadcast the frequency of, say, an essential oil along with the energy of the power pyramid to fill your space. Yeah. So frequency, you know, rifing, this is a method that completely fits with the time we're in. And uh, you could get something like this. I, I would probably get this with all the basic accessories. It's probably going to be like four or 500. But mm, if, you just got, if, if you just got the transmitter remote and the generator, it's probably maybe like 250 shipped. That's a pretty good deal. But, you, you know, the thing is, is that for some people, they may think that that's beyond what I want to pay. But guess what? Try going to the ER, the hospital. The doctor, see, yeah. See how much, see how much, you're, that, that's like getting a Rife machine now. Well, it's also expensive. Supplements become expensive. You have to buy them over and over every month and whatnot. Yeah. So this is a like kind of like what we talked about, a one-time purchase of the device, but there's no continuing payments. <laughs> so yeah, and, you know, it's actually fun to play with. Fun because, to play with. Because yeah. people are like, well, I'm not sick. I don't need to play, you know, I don't need to, something like that. But once you have a frequency generator and some of these like toys, it's fun. You can connect it to power pyramid. You can do all kinds of other things with it. Yeah. Um, so so the, the couple other things I'll throw out real quick. And again, this is not medical advice. This is just things that I've tried. Okay. Uh, we talked about rifing, right? Uh, the, the essential oils, things in your space that can raise the vibration. Mm -hmm. uh, people, a lot of people know about colloidal silver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Silver has been known for thousands of years as an antiseptic. Even the, the cowboys, they used to put like a silver dollar in their water containers, and that would keep the water fresh. Uh, there's copper. Okay, copper kills parasites. Yeah. Uh, you kind of got to be careful with copper because uh, beyond a certain point, it can be toxic. But Yep. Because, uh, uh, you know, it's like anything. You, has, you have to have the right stuff. But uh, there's a reason why in the Ayurvedic, you know, culture that, or the Vedic culture, they used to have copper cups because mm -hmm. you get a micro amount of copper. But yeah. of course with the copper cups, they say, don't leave it like a full day. Yeah. But if it's sitting in there for an hour or two, you'll get. Uh, that, that, that's why I drink mules. You know what I mean? So I get a little yeah. bit of that copper in my cocktail. <laughs> and, and copper. And I saw something uh, the other day that it, it was like a little, it was like a, a, a copper rod with a little scoop at the end. Yeah. But basically it was saying that if you're feeling sick, just take it, that rod and rub it in the inside of your nose. Oh, that's same, interesting. Same, same thing. You just get that micro amount of copper. It's a trace. You need a, it's a micro trace element. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing. And, uh, yeah, that, that's it. You know, EMF. Oh, and, and any, any kind of, see, this is the thing. People are, are there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of focus solely on what can we do against this coronavirus. But I would say, what can we do to increase your health in general? Yes. Because see, the thing is, is that the public health is so low right now that you're going to get sick from virtually anything. People's yeah. immune system is so hammered. Like I said, it's not just one thing. Your body has toxin and stress from so many areas that just taking care of the emf issues will raise your health right yeah. and i can tell you like you can run detox with the uh, rife machines also oh that's cool this is interesting <laughs> because i've killed off all kinds of parasites you know all kinds of things with rife machine right yeah emily the biggest because they call herx a herxamer reaction herxamer a, reaction yeah it's a detox right mm-hmm the strongest detox I had, rifing, 
was not from any parasite, was not from, uh, you know, the typical things you would think of. They have a preset for chemtrails. Yeah. And basically, uh, the idea is it vibrates these heavy metals mm -hmm. until they come out of the cells, goes into your bloodstream and come out, right? Yeah. I felt like I had a flu for like a, a day or two. Yeah. Like, you know, you get the lymph node sore. Yep. And I was thinking like, man, these chemtrails are serious because out yep. of anything, I felt the sickest from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And la one last thing. Okay. Ionic foot bath. Yeah. I have one. And uh, if you have like the spa grade, it's uh, and I think it has to be like above 14 volts or something like that. They basically, you get what you pay for, right? If you get a super cheap one, it's not going to be as good as like a spa grade one. But I definitely had more energy the next day. Yeah. And uh, that, because see the, the feet, right? The feet have the meridians connected to every organ in the body and it's interesting that that every astrological sign rules a part of the body pisces 12th house right most spiritual sign pisces Eight. rules the feet yeah so if you detox the feet it literally pulls toxins out from everywhere in your body and um it also energizes you so that's another idea and if you don't have the money to buy a full setup there's plenty of spas out there where you can get a session. And I on it for that. Absolutely. All right. We're going to wind this first hour down. We're going to move over into the patron section where we may talk about um, uh, the controversies surrounding orgone energy. We're also going to talk about uh, Masaki's recent uh, articles about uh, the esoteric and the cult symbolism behind Japan. Um, but before we do, um, we are having an event, February 22nd here in Los Angeles. Masaki will be there. And as he has a dazzling display of uh, knowledge, uh, abilities, tools, all sorts of cool stuff. He makes things, and that was the main reason I wanted to do my first event with him. So um, it's called Power Up 2020. I will be giving a, a talk on my, uh, the metaphysics of sugar, sort of where this whole thing of using sugar to, uh, to, con to control societies uh, started from uh, and, and how it sort of moved into present times and what we're watching right now. My friend Laura Wilson will be teaching a class on uh, with doing some yoga. So basically yoga for uh, kind of metaphysical purposes. Even if you don't necessarily love yoga, there's definitely some benefits to it that uh, can't sort of be argued about. And then we're going to be doing a pyramid meditation with Masaki's big boy that he showed us there. And we're also going to be making pyramids and you will be able to take home a pyramid, a, a cloud buster, and a mold to make pyramids in the future on your own. And, and, also, it, and I, I don't do many uh, workshops now. I think I might have done like one last year. So if people are interested in hands-on uh, making a pyramid, and like you said, um, we're making a Tower Buster, the little muffin-shaped one, mm -hmm. it's a good opportunity if you're in the Southern California area because, uh, yeah, it's I don't do that many castings, public yeah. castings anymore. Can, so. This is an opportunity to learn from the master how you can make your own tools, and then you can go off and develop your own artistic style with it the way Misaki has. And he doesn't know if he's going to do anymore. This might be the last workshop he does like this. So it's a day to learn some things, to do some physical movement, to build some things with your hands, and to have, you know, Masaki will be there. I'll be there. We can have interesting conversations, pick each other's minds, laugh, have a good time, healthy food, snack, drinks, all that kind of stuff. So please join us. We have there's a small workshop because of the complexities of making pyramids. So get at me quickly. You can contact me at technobrat21 at gmail.com, or you can hit me up on Facebook. Uh, for further information, you can see, go to Masaki's website, which is akaida.com, to book numerology reading sessions, to buy pyramids and other sorts of energy tools. And anything, anything else you want to say before I move into the patrons hour? Or is that good? That was good. That's good. All right, guys. Keep, keep your vibe high. Huh? All right. We'll see you on the other side. I'm gonna take a This is off Planet Radio. Bye, guys.